Hey, I'm Caleb from You Can Make This Too, and this is a pretty sweet vintage trailer that's mine now, and I've been wanting to fix one up for a while, so I'm gonna fix this one up. Step one is gonna be getting it home, which I hope is gonna be easy, but then I've gotta figure out how to get in my tiny backyard so I can work on it. And that's not gonna be so easy, but I think I have a plan that just might work. I think an electric jack might be on the list of things I add to this. probably need a lower hitch ball too. This video is sponsored by the Home Depot's Prospective Tool Review Program. Most of the tools I'll be using were provided by them and will become Patreon contest prizes. All right, so we made the trip without incident, fortunately. Got a few other problems though. First is the unexpected weather change. Here's the other problem though. This is my gate. If it seems a little too small, it's cause it is. So this is where I actually need to bring the trailer through. Fortunately, it's actually gonna go right here so this works well. From the fence looking at the trailer, you can see why I really need to come down the other side. One, my blueberries are in the way and if they weren't where they are is where the side slope is the worst. So I need to bring it down their side and then cut it in there. The easiest way to get this fence down will be to just remove the whole panels and then I can put the whole panel back up. And to do that, I need to go get a T20 instead of a T25 bit. So if you notice there wasn't any tool no noises, that's uh, cause I apparently bumped off my microphone. I had some amazing jokes and hit some of my tool talking points. So if my jokes seem really lame, it's cause it's my second delivery and we'll blame that. Not them being lame dad jokes. I could put it back up and do it again, but. All right, so this is starting to look like something even I can back a trailer through. Kind of out of practice on that. Next, we're gonna remove this post and I'm gonna take this post out too. That gives me clearance all the way back to here. I can see most of the screws here, but there might be some behind this picket. Um, I could do the other end and then remove these. And if it comes loose, there's not. But this DeWalt four pound mini sledge is a whole lot of fun. So I'm gonna hit more stuff. It's hammer time. There weren't any more screws. Pro tip, don't leave your screws in your yard. Also don't leave them in your pants before you put them in the laundry. I think I'm just gonna drag this one down there out of the way. Good thing I've got some extra grip. You wouldn't know from looking at it, but this stump has a lot to do with this project being possible. There used to be a red bud here that uh, blocked the way, so bringing the trailer back here wasn't an option to work on it because my wife wouldn't let me cut it down, but then it mysteriously died and she let me cut it down. Now I can bring the trailer back here. I didn't collect its apples, make a house from its limbs, or dig out a canoe, but it's my giving tree. If you're particularly observant, you might notice that these posts still serve as a bit of an obstacle to getting the trailer to where you are, but it's raining. I should move the camera, huh? Here we go. I was gonna get some close-up shots, but I don't wanna mess with the camera umbrella a bunch. Fortunately, if I learned anything being a combat engineer, it was how to get wet. I 
And if you're asking yourself or wondering, how are you gonna put your fence back up without those posts? Let me tell you, friend, that's a good question. Get these posts back together i've got these post cap bracket with this and then scabbing a board on it should be good i think good enough for a fence definitely good enough for a fence now do the same thing on the other cap So my trailer backing skills didn't uh, deteriorate as much as I thought they had and apparently I made a lot more work for myself than I needed to which is par for the course. Anyway to get it out though this post will have to be removed again so instead of putting it back I'm going to tap con it to my brick wall so that way when it's time to take this out I can just take off this panel and pull it straight out. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill some pilot holes for the tap cons. and I'm aiming to make sure I hit whole bricks and not a grout line. Now I've got it approximately level, I can run my masonry bit through and mark. is all back up now it's time to get this levelish but definitely more stable then I can empty it out and show you the inside also this fire pit needs to go To get this close to level, I need to jack it up and get another one of these eight inch blocks under here. But as I lift it up, it's probably just gonna be resting on the jack in the front. So I need to support the front more before I raise up the rear end. Fortunately, this side has a jack built in, so I can just raise it up, slide some blocks under the frame, then go back to the back. Now I'm gonna jack up one side, put a half block under it, do the same on the other side, come back, add another, and then we should be pretty level. So my jack has given out on me. I think this uh, oil seeping out by the handle probably isn't a good sign. All right, made a Home Depot run, got a new jack. Gonna give this a try again. With the new jack, I was able to get everything lifted. Jumped ahead, because it's a bunch of the same. I ended up doubling up the blocks, as well as turning these. So instead of being on their sides, they're upright the way they're meant to, to bear load. Got my six foot Milwaukee level here, which gives a pretty good reference, because it's so long. And like I said, we're in the neighborhood of level. Granted, I don't think being level is really a requirement for anything, but it is gonna make working inside there a little bit easier. Far more important is that it's really stable now. It doesn't really wiggle around like it used to. Now that everything's supported well, I'm gonna to try to get a look at the brakes and hubs, see if everything looks okay. I've got two impact wrenches I'm gonna try, Ryobi and Rigid. Uh, big differences are this is a 3 8 inch and this is a half inch chuck. Give them a try. That was stupid fast. One other thing the rigid has is an auto mode. So it'll go as fast as it thinks and then slow down as it needs, which is kind of cool. This one's just manual, so I'll start slow and speed it up. Yeah. If winning one of these impact wrenches sounds interesting to you, make sure to stick around. And special thanks to Chris Harmon 
my investor level patron. Whew, those both work great. And these are a little toasty. All right, we've got electric drum brakes on both of these. And this one rubs a little bit once in a while. This one's got, you hear a lot more noise, so definitely gonna need some work. That the belly pan has definitely come loose some, so I'm gonna have to pull all that off and reattach it just to make sure water isn't getting that way. Oof. And looks like the suspension is a little locked up, so I need to start cleaning all this off, getting a bunch of lubricant on it, try to loosen it up. all trash and I'll break it down and get this to run away but some of it might be useful um, these are pieces that were ripped out that as you can see fit the curve so I'll probably transfer some of these shapes to something so I can use them as templates later so this is the front as you can tell uh, I got it partially gutted the kitchen was over there and it already been ripped out of course there's the door got some windows up here, the screens were added over all the windows. I think this is just something someone added. It looks like the uh, build-a-screen window kind of kits you can get. It had some leaks up front, which is really common in trailers. And so this part of the flooring had already been ripped out. Someone also covered up this window and the rock guard. I kind of hope the rock guard's still there. I'm guessing it's not, though. Really curious to get this out and see what there is. My understanding of the layout is there was a cabinet and couch up front. I think we're going to do a dining table that drops down with seating on each side. That'll turn into a bed. Put the kitchen where it is. Overall, really planning on keeping the layout about the same, I think. You're in the front passenger corner now. Like I said, the kitchen was ripped out. The upper cabinets, though, are still here, along with a squirrel's nest, it looks like. This Hardware is kind of neat because um, it's made to stay closed, but I like the way that it opens naturally as you would grab it. So I might try to clean this up. I'm going to hold on to all the hardware, then decide whether or not I'm going to reuse it or get new hardware. Pretty sure the stove was here because this is where the vent is. And what's neat about this area is that I know a lot of these had a vinyl or something, and I think this is what was original. It's peeling off, but you can tell at some point someone painted it um, with not a very good paint. We got three of these vents. I wonder if they open. Yeah, looks like they're probably left open by the amount of leaves and debris in there. And hopefully, if I'm lucky, these openings are about the size of what a air conditioner needs because I definitely want to add an air conditioner to this. Now dead center looking back. This is where the fridge was. It was run by propane, hence the line, and that's what the uh, door vent is for. The closet here. Obviously, another closet on this side, which the power bank is in there. Back here were couches slash beds with storage above it. And this is in the kitchen too. One of the cool things about these is there's catches in the ceiling to hold up the cabinet. One of the changes I think I'm going to make though is instead of a bed on each side, I've seen one set up that had bunk beds and the top bunk drop down to give you a couch with a back. And then the other side have um, a desk utility work-ish kind of area. Under the beds is more storage. On this side, there's actually a door um, from the outside that accesses in. So this is outside accessible storage on this side. And over here, there's a panel on the outside that reaches the hot water heater. Um, until about middle of the window is actually the wheel wells. Let me show you that closet. And here is just more storage. Looks like it was meant to be a closet and converted to a pantry. The wheel well is under here. As I've mentioned, here's the power distribution. Someone added or upgraded this to 100 amp. Of course, most places only have 50. Of course, the only thing left is the bathroom. It's not really big enough to work with the tripod at all, so we'll just handhold in here. 
So above we just have some storage, of course sink, more storage and pipes underneath, some doors there. By the drawers is this area that was a little hard to open. Of course toilet, it's raised up. I'm not sure if that's how it was for the black water tank to have somewhere or something else. And right now the shower is just running off the faucet. And vent. And there you go. This is my new camper that I'll be rebuilding. It doesn't have a name though, which is a problem. And that's actually my Patreon and YouTube contest for this month. I've been using these prospective tools as a giveaway for my patrons over on Patreon. And this month I'll be giving away the Ryobi Impact Wrench. Uh, next month or the month after, I'll do the Rigid and the Impact Driver, not wrench, but the Ryobi Impact Driver I was using earlier will also be coming up soon, as well as lots of other tools. All you have to do is sign up for my Patreon and the contest will be recommend a name for this. If Patreon isn't your thing, that's okay. Here on YouTube, I'll be doing a contest prize, same thing, leave your name recommendations below and whatever I like, I'll pick someone and send you a t-shirt. Now I know a lot of people will be curious what level of rebuild and gut I'm going to do and I haven't totally decided. I'm definitely going to rebuild all of this. I think the floor probably mostly needs to come out and be replaced. I know up front it's still really soft. The tanks have already been gutted. It doesn't have a freshwater gray or black tank though I don't think we'll be boondocking much so I haven't decided if I'm going to add tanks back or keep this as strictly a hookups kind of camper. Whoever has RV experience, please let me know your thoughts on that. Same thing for removing the interior skin. On one hand, I kind of want to remove the interior skin because that would let me redo all of the electrical as well as check the state of the insulation and potentially replace the insulation, but that would also be a huge headache and I'm not sure if there really are any leaks or if that's an issue. I um, need to do some more research and of course if you have any experience doing this, please let me know. But anyways, stay tuned. I'm still going to be doing my woodworking stuff, but these videos will be popping up as we go. And until next time, make time to make something. Of course, the only thing left is the bathroom. And really, they're meant for me, not this. I'm not sure if cutting this tree down is against code or not, so it might be illegal, but fortunately there weren't any witnesses, except my chainsaw. My chain saw. <laughs>